Hello everybody, my name is Ray. Welcome to the Evangelical Dark Web. Today, I want to talk about the AND campaign and how they're supporting the light version of the Equality Act. They believe that there is a compromise that is acceptable. So let's go through that. So I wrote this article, published Saturday, March 20th, and it kind of goes over how the, the there's like 57 woke, predominantly black pastors that advocated for a compromise to the Equality Act known as the Fairness for All Act. And the Fairness for All Act is, you know, is, is like the Equality Act, but with religious exemptions. And, you know, from a biblical perspective, that that's just not going to cut it. That is not an acceptable compromise. And we see... And let's just open up the letter here that they sent. So we have, you know, a letter sent to the Honorable Richard Durbin and the Honorable Chuck Grassley. You know, talks about how, you know, we should be supporting uh, homosexuals and transvestites in employment, housing, and the like. And... But here are their criticisms of the Equality Act. And this is important. Their criticisms of the Equality Act are these four bullet points here. It would allow the homosexual transvestite rights to be used as a sword against faith institutions rather than a shield to protect the vulnerable. In addition to failing to offer religious protections to religious institutions, the Equality Act would likely revoke federal security disaster release and school lunch money from thousands of religious schools and federal partnerships with thousands of faith-based programs that serve the most vulnerable revoke Pell Grants and federal loan eligibility for tens of thousands of students that attend hundreds of religious schools convert houses of worship and other religious properties into public accommodations and meshing them from constant litigation. So basically, you know, they'd be subject to litigation. Now, see what their main critiques are focused on? They're focused on their own church's ability to get federal dollars. That's what their, you know, that's what their criticisms are focused on. They're not even focused on the fact that churches could be sued for not hiring a transvestite crossdresser to be a pastor or a music minister of any any kind, you know, because employment would be protected. You know, they're not talking about how n denying a wedding for a transvestite could be a civil rights violation. They're not really addressing more salient concerns. They're mostly focused on their own dollars, their own bottom line, their own ability to continue receiving federal dollars and that's just not going to cut it. They don't care about women's sports and the issue of women's sports. They don't care about, you know, being able to ha defend bona fide qualifications for jobs. They don't care about the freedom of association. Instead, they, you know, they just want to codify the Equality Act and maintain that churches get money from the federal government. That's basically all they want to do. And, and I'm not blaming churches that – I'm not trying to badmouth churches that receive federal or state dollars to do good deeds. I'm not uh, criticizing that at all. But as far as the concerns that you know Christians have over the Equality Act, those are towards the bottom of the list. You know, there's much higher concern about gendered spaces, you know, allowing a transvestite in a gendered space. There's, far greater concerned about that there's far greater concern about uh men competing in women's sports there's far more concern about these things and the fact that women will lose scholarships to colleges because to men in their own sports so far greater issues involving protection of women's rights than protecting religious institutions and their ability to get money from the federal government for various programs. So the Fairness for All Act clearly does not address the legitimate concerns Christians have, but you know, the AND campaign is pagan. 
So they're not Christian. They never were. They're just they're they've always been about promoting social justice in public policy under the guise of Christianity. That is what the and campaign is about. Now, I do want to point out some of the notable names that have signed this. We have Dr. Charlie Dates. I recently referenced him. Um, he was the guy that had Beth Moore preach at his church on a Sunday morning and would later leave the Southern Baptist Convention because they were not woke enough. Charlie Dates is a signer here. And you can see that video on the Beth Moore sermon that I did. And we have Esau McCulley. Uh, you may not recognize this name, but he's the author of Reading While Black. And if you know, you can't judge a book by its cover, but you can certainly make a lot of inferences based on the book's title. And another name I want to point out is Benjamin Watson, former NFL player. And he's been touted around as a pro-life activist. And if he's palling around with the AND campaign, how pro-life can he really be? Because the AND campaign also believes that the best way to prevent abortion and to eliminate abortion in our society is to pay people to not murder their children. That's what the AND campaign's pro-life policies are and that's not pro-life i'm sorry that doesn't work so you know just want to point out that you know this is not an acceptable compromise and we cannot retreat we cannot retreat and say that this is a, an acceptable compromise the fairness for all act is no more fair than the equality act it's an unacceptable compromise cannot do it and the only reason I'm really pointing this out is, you know, if I thought that the Fairness for All Act had a chance, I wouldn't be doing a video to draw attention to it. But I don't think Democrats will bend on the Equality Act. This is their campaign issue. This is their, they've been championing this and they want to continue to champion this. They don't want to compromise with the Fairness for All Act because they want to do a hard close on transgenderism. They're going for the hard sell. So they're not going to let up. And I do think a number of Republicans would bend on this issue, but I'm not even sure if they'd get 60 votes in the Senate because it doesn't actually address women's sports. And, you know, I guess uh, Christy Nome, the governor of South Dakota, who's one of the best governors in the country, I would have rated her the best governor in 2020, but apparently she can't hold the line on this issue. So... She's proving on this issue to not be presidential material. So that's all I wanted to say. My name is Ray. This is the Evangelical Dark Web. Subscribe to Evangelical Dark Web, the channel, and also subscribe to Evangelical Dark Web, the website linked in the description below. And comment below what you think about what I think. And I will catch you on the next one. Have a blessed day.